Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the sixth day of the Speed Chess Championship 2020 and finally Hikaru Nakamura, number one seed in this tournament, uh, plays his match. Uh, Hikaru Nakamura, 32 years old, American Grandmaster with Japanese roots, with legendary ranking 2900. This is the official feeder ranking uh, in this game. I would like to show you he's going to play as black and definitely he is the favorite because his opponent, Haik, Marty Rossian from Armenia, very talented uh, grandmaster, but he's um, very, very young. He's only 20 years old, so um, not as much experience as Hikaru Nakamura, and he's ranking 2597. So this is why Hikaru is the favorite. In this game, I would like to show you how uh, is going to play as white. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have d4 by Haik Marty Rossian, uh, we have knight f6, knight f3, we have e6, c4 and d5. So queen's gambit declined. Uh, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop f4, Harvitz attack, we have a castle and now e3. And here c5 is the main idea in the in the semi taras style where one of the sides uh, can decide to play with the with the isolated queen's pawn usually the games are uh, very very interesting however hikaru nakamura usually prefers knight b to d7 uh, we have bishop e2 d takes on c4 uh, we have castle of course this bishop doesn't need to take the pawn yet uh, we have uh, c5 should be played again this is the main idea here just to undermine this center but Hikaru goes for a6 uh, we have a4 now b5 is not possible because after exchanging the rook is hanging also for your information sometimes if you see something like c6 a6 uh, and b5 this is also not playable because this pawn together with the knight uh, also can sacrifice here and win the exchange because this rook is usually hanging there so this is why we have b6 bishop c4 as planned um, and now bishop d6 now now challenging this uh, annoying bishop on this diagonal so we have bishop g5 changing the diagonal h6 bishop h4 and now bishop b7 as planned so this bishop uh, is quite powerful uh, with this open diagonal long diagonal and here what white usually played is queen e2 connect the rooks preparing e4 or play e4 immediately because this knight is pinned so there is no problem this knight cannot control e4 so um, this is the idea however Haig Martirosian went for quite a novelty uh, and he played d5 now uh, there are some variations here where where b5 could be played very sharp but very annoying also for black this pawn is, uh, is uh, really annoying because if it's take, taken right now um, then of course a black gonna have to deal with this uh, ugly pawn structure and if play g5 the pawn structure also is weakened here okay bishop g3 and the continuation so Hikaru was not interested in that uh, and he just simply uh, take the pawn so we have e takes on d5 bishop d5 now challenging this bishop we have queen c8 defending at the same time um, avoiding the pin so now the knight um, can freely move uh, and and here the engine recommends just to exchange the, the the bishops and why because after exchanging the bishops the game is just normal okay the rooks are connected so bring the rooks to the open file and continue the game however we have e4 and e4 is a is a bit risky actually it's losing the pawn so we have rook e8 we have rook e1, bishop d5, knight d5, and now knight e4. And why doesn't have the compensation for this for this pawn? So uh, simply, what uh, what happened? Why just lost the pawn? We have queen c2 now attacking the knight twice uh, and Hikaru uh, could go of course to c5 however he choose a queen b7 a counter attacking another knight uh, we have rook a to d1 now defending so this knight has to retreat knight e to c5 uh, and here probably knight e7 was was the best option for Haik Martirosian uh, actually after knight d7 bishop e7 bishop e7 there is the, the problem that b4 can be played and if this knight is moved then this knight is hanging so here is there are some some hidden tactics here uh, so if something like knight f8 just avoiding that and um, then always we have bishop c5 b takes on c5 and black has this ugly pawn structure 
Haik Martirosian definitely saw something is going on here, that this is the weakness after attacking the, the knight, but uh, he found another way uh, to trying to exploit that, uh, but the, the way is, is quite uh, different. So rook e8, rook e8, and, and only now b4. So the knight goes to e6, and now after bishop g3, bishop g3, h takes on g3, the idea is that the knight can take on c7, okay? In, if the knight uh, takes, then of course the rook gonna take on d7, uh, and if the queen takes and also uh, can exchange and also take the, the knight on d7. Here is the idea. However, the problem is that the black has the move now. So we have c5 defending the knight potentially. And now we have b5. a takes on b5, a takes on b5. So Hikaru Nakamura has um, the protected past pawn. A very strong asset, but with a lot of pieces on the board, uh, it's not that strong yet. Uh, and now very interesting move by Hikaru, knight d4 attacking the queen, attacking the knight and attacking this knight because the knight is blocking so there is no defense on the knight. So uh, we have knight d4 now uh, and queen d5. This knight has to be moved so we have knight f5 with the attack on the queen, discovered attack and Hikaru went to e6. We have knight d6 now attacking the rook, so rook a8, now uh, moving the rook to the another open file, so Hikaru wants to bring this rook to the game um, in the right moment. We have knight c4 now blocking this pawn, and just for your information, the knights are one of the best blockers, because first of all, they are very, very elastic, and very often they can actually attack the base of this little pawn chain, so in this case, b6 is under attack. For for now is of course defended but uh, black have to you know keep an eye on the b6 uh, otherwise white also gonna have the the pass pawn on their own we have knight f6 so only queen um, defense now and now f3 taking under control these two squares so the knight cannot um, come easily we have g6 making a space for the for the king king h2 and now knight d5 remaneuvering the the knight also maybe trying to exchange the knights that would be the quite a serious threat and also um, yeah white would be actually forced to exchange the knights so this is why we have queen d2 now taking under control also preparing to remaneuvering them the queen to the more more active position and of course uh, for now pointing an h6 we have knight e7 um, and now uh, Hikaru Nakamura doesn't care about this h6 uh, because if this is taken then of course this knight is hanging so uh, it's nothing going on so far uh, this is why we have queen f4 so uh, Haig Martirosian coming closer and closer uh, and here what should be played by Hikaru Nakamura is something like knight d5 with the attack on the queen, probably the queen would have to be exchanged because there are no good squares for the queen now. So probably something like queen e5, queen e5, knight e5, knight c7 going after that pawn. Uh, of course, white also can go, for example, after that pawn this way or maybe this way. So there are a couple of options, but black gonna end up with the uh, with this past pawn. So pretty comfortable position for black. However, Hikaru Nakamura didn't find it, um, and he played rook a4. It looks like much more, more more stronger move because now the knight is pinned and attacked twice. And if white actually decide to defend, the problem is that this knight can actually come and attack this this knight, and this is the huge problem however Hikaru probably missed the queen b8 with check so um, the queen goes back and the knight is not longer pinned we have king g7 and now knight b6 winning the pawn and now Haig Martirosian has the passed pawn on its own and now Hikaru Nakamura really has the last chance actually uh, to continue the, the, the good game. Exchanging the rooks is the, is the key to go because this rook actually controls too many squares and very important squares. So uh, you will see why. So rook d4 should be played here and after exchanging just try to play let's say queen c7 
let's say d3 uh, knight c4 just protecting this d2 blocking and trying to get with this with this pawn but black also have a chances but the position is very very complicated because these two uh, passed pawns are very very dangerous of both sides so a lot of calculations would be really really needed here but that was the last chance for hikaru nakamura to actually get the good game however hikaru uh, underestimated the, the attack of white and he played the rook a2 so he creates very serious threat uh, he wants to actually checkmate his opponent but it's too slow boom knight d7 as you see this rook actually controls the d file and very important d7 square so definitely the queen gonna penetrate and attack the position of the king very dangerous so we have knight g8 now the knight defending the position of the king for example f6 uh, is defended and um, as the same at the same time also the knight can work as a shelter for the king so if, if needed the king also can hide uh, we we have queen f8 with check king h7 and here actually this is the time to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white but it's not forced tactic it's quite a long one but it's also pretty logical one and at least there are three winning continuation for haik martirosian so pause the video while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so uh, the point is that the queen is defending f7 this is the key square for for the attack uh, and there are a couple of ways so for example knight can come to e5 so already we have very very serious threat and the point is that also the queen cannot take it because this pawn gonna be lost and then the rook gonna join the attack and and then checkmate is coming uh, another way would be rook e1 also deflecting the queen so the queen would have to go to the to the f5 and that would be very very complicated and it seems like the most logical way of winning i will show you just one of the variations if you found this too knight e5 of rook e1 uh, congratulations but also winning is rook d6 also kicking the queen so the queen want to stay on this diagonal and defend them the f7 which is very very vulnerable so probably queen c4 uh, and now after b6 this is the critical uh, move because now this pawn actually defends a7 so the rook cannot come and protect extra in some variation to f7 uh, and also this this pawn is marching so rook is forced to b2 uh, and now everything is forced knight f6 knight f6 rook f6 and there is very simple attack now on f7 uh, but black has some resources uh, they are not enough however it can be very very close the best for what black can do here is actually rook g2 and now if the king starts to run then also uh, the rook gonna go to h2 so doesn't matter king g2 and now queen e2 uh, king h3 queen f1 king h4 king h1 and black actually gonna win back the material at least the rook and the problem is that white is still winning because after queen c5 this pawn gonna win the game but probably after all the checks that's gonna take some time uh, and it's still gonna be quite long but this was the way for haik martirosian uh, to win the game in blitz everything can happen especially against hikaru nakamura who is very very fast and calculate but this is quite clear way to victory you know you bring the queen to c7 if your king is um, checked too many times and then it also uh, can go somehow to the shelter um, and then push the pawn and, and and win that way so that was the option however in the in our game we have queen d8 so haig martyrosian retreat with the queen and that's the problem because now hikaru get the advantage and he goes for that so this is his only chance uh, attacking the g2 pawn threatening the checkmate we have rook g1 and now we we have queen f3 it starts to be very dangerous the queen can come for example to to h5 so we have queen h4 defending we have queen d5 with the attack on the on the knight so knight b6 uh, and now the queen is under attack and the most precise way of playing by hikaru nakamura would be queen b7 with the attack on the knight and uh, x-ray also uh, and maybe win the pawn however hikaru went for queen uh, b3 
we have queen f4 saying if you take my pawn then i'm gonna win your rook i'm gonna win your rook so that's not possible this is why hikaru went for e6 now the knight is under attack so if the king goes for example to g7 um, then white gonna be in troubles and in this position actually haik martyrosian lost on time uh, according to the engine the position is completely equal but definitely very complicated and complex uh, so uh, that would be very difficult to actually to win um, in the normal time control however this is blitz one second incrementation Haik Martyrosian lost on time against Hikaru Nakamura uh, and this is what happened a couple of times uh, Hikaru Nakamura uh, was in trouble a couple of times and he always found some resources to at least draw the game or like in this case actually win so look at the scores as you see Hikaru Nakamura just devastated his opponent but yeah that's of course the 300 elo points difference so there was no surprise here and, and yeah if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games from speed chess championship 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and See you in the next one.